Okay, so you might not know this, but a lot of power companies around the country now charge extra for electricity during certain hours of the day. For example, in Southern California, during the summer months, people get charged 36 cents per kilowatt hour during off-peak hours, and then 58 cents per kilowatt hour during peak hours. So could we set up a small power station to store energy when electricity is cheap, and then run an appliance like a fridge off of it when electricity gets expensive? And could you save money on your power bill by doing this? This whole plan hinges on just these two things. The first is a very cheap smart plug and the second is a power station with a UPS feature which most of the good ones have nowadays. For the smart plug what we're mainly interested in is its scheduling feature which lets you set a time when the smart plug automatically turns on or off. It's currently 1246 so to test out the scheduling feature I've set it to turn the lamp off at 1247 and turn it back on a minute later. Nice, it worked. And then there's the UPS feature. There are two parts to how this feature works. The first is called pass-through, which is when the power station, when it's connected to the wall like mine is, it passes through the grid power to whatever appliance is plugged into it. The power station is being charged at a rate of 200 watts. Watch what happens when I turn on my electric kettle. Now 1,350 watts are coming in and about 1,100 watts are going out. So it's still being charged at that difference, which is around 200, 220 watts, but it's passing through the remaining 1100 watts. And even when the power station is fully charged, it'll continue to pass through power to whatever appliance it's connected to. The second part of the UPS feature is switch over. So if the grid power ever gets cut off, such as during a power outage or intentionally, such as with, I don't know, a smart plug, let's say, then what will happen is the power station will automatically switch over from grid power to battery power as this one just did and the appliance will keep running in most cases without interruption and when grid power gets restored it automatically switches back over to grid power again so fast that the appliance in most cases experiences no interruption combine these two things and in theory we could run an appliance off of grid power when electricity is cheap and then switch to the power station when prices spike Let's find out if this setup actually works first. And if it does, then we'll crunch the numbers to see if it can save money on your power bill. The power station is plugged into the wall using a smart plug. And then the fridge is plugged into the power station. And I am using a second smart plug so we can get a sense of how much energy the power station itself consumes just to pass through the grid power to the fridge, but you wouldn't need this for the final setup. Now I'm gonna turn on the AC outlets by pushing this button. And it should take about 10 minutes for my fridge to start running again. For the smart plug that the power station is plugged into, which is down there behind the fridge, I have set a schedule for it to turn off when energy gets expensive at around 4 p.m. and to turn it on when energy gets cheap again at around 9 p.m. So the fridge, I just heard it turn on and start running again. Let's check. So it's using around 50 to 55 watts and the power station is passing through the grid power to the fridge. So it's not running off the battery currently. The smart plug is about to turn off, it's currently I think 359, so it should turn off any second, which means that the UPS function, the UPS switchover will trigger and it'll start running the fridge off of the battery. So it's currently 359. Oh, okay. I just heard the smart plug turn off and I noticed no flicker and the light here, I hear the fridge running still. So I think that the switchover worked without the fridge cutting off. And let's check the, let's check the power station. Okay. So now it is running off of battery and we can see that it has an estimated 15 hours remaining and the fridge is still using around 50 watts. And if we check the smart plug app, we see the power station's smart plug is turned off, which is what we wanted. We wanted it to turn off right at four. So that schedule I set is working and it should be off until 9 p.m. 
Now we'll just continue to use our fridge like normal during the evening and I'll monitor the battery percentage. 8.59, I'm gonna open the fridge so we can see if there's any interruption in power when the smart plug that's connected to the power station turns on. Okay, nine. I heard it. I heard something on the... Okay, so no interruption. The light didn't flicker or anything. The fridge is still running. And on the screen here, I can see there are 159 watts going out and 382 watts coming in. So I presume about 160 watts of those 382 are going to power the fridge here and then the remaining are charging the power station's battery. Just over two hours later, and the power station is fully charged again. I would call that a successful test run. So I'll just let it run until we have a full 24 hours worth of data, and then we'll crunch the numbers. I noticed something concerning this morning. So like I mentioned at the start, I'm using this second smart plug to measure the energy consumption of the power station itself. But frankly, I hadn't compared the power consumption of these two smart plugs until this morning, and let me show you what I found. Okay, so the fridge is currently using four watts. Keep that number in mind. And then if I go to the power station smart plug, look at its energy usage, it's using 12 and a half watts. Eight and a half watts difference. And earlier today when the fridge was using more power, I also checked the smart plugs. And again, I saw a roughly nine watt difference. I know eight and a half to nine watts might not sound like a lot, but that could be the difference between a setup like this, potentially saving you money on your power bill, or it making your power bill even higher. We just hit the 24 hour mark. I collected the necessary data I needed from the smart plugs so we can finally start to crunch the numbers. Let's look at three scenarios that I call small, medium, and large. And this is referring to the price jump in percentage terms between off-peak and peak hours. In the small scenario, the price increase is 61%, again, between off-peak and peak hours. In the medium scenario, the price increase is 290%. And in the large scenario, the price increase is 1,300%. I looked at the energy consumption and energy cost of just the fridge, and then the energy consumption and energy cost of the fridge plus the power station. And I won't go into too much detail on all these numbers here, but I'll leave a link to the spreadsheet in the video description below if you wanna take a look at it. All right, let's look at the savings. So in the small scenario, you are actually increasing your power bill by about five cents per day. Why is it? increasing, well, it's because the power station takes energy to do its thing and to run. And the price increase between off-peak and peak hours is not big enough in this scenario to offset the extra energy that the power station uses. In the medium scenario, you're saving five cents per day, uh, which is not that much. And then in the large scenario, you're saving just around 21 cents per day. So how long would it take you to recoup your investment? Well, if you bought a smart plug at around $15, in the medium scenario, it would take around 278 days, and in the large scenario, about 71 days. And if you're looking at payback period for the power station, let's say it's $700, well, quickly you get into uh, many, many years to, to pay it back based on those savings. But an important caveat to all this, which I wrote here, is this whole analysis is based on each utility's time of use rates during their summer period. So utilities that do peak pricing, they change the, you know, the off-peak and peak hour rates depending on the time of year. And I pulled these from their summer periods when the price jump is highest. So I added at the bottom here, it's possible that these daily cost savings turn into daily cost increases during non-summer periods. When you start to scale up this tactic of saving cheap energy for later, which I think is technically called peak shaving, it can start to make more financial sense. That's one reason why some people get a big backup battery like a Tesla Powerwall when they put solar panels on their roofs. It's because the battery lets them store their excess solar energy for later when electricity prices are high. If this little experiment is making you wanna consider a professionally installed solar panel system with a backup battery, then I'll leave a link below in the video description to a solar calculator where you can estimate your home's potential savings and if you want, get quotes from local solar companies. And I'm really curious to keep experimenting in this way. I don't know why, but I find it fun. So let me know if there are any setups or appliances that you'd like me to try this sort of thing with. 